Hi, welcome back to another Speed Clean with me to give you some speed cleaning motivation to get your home clean and tidy. I am Re from mummyof4.com and I'm hoping this video you can stick it on and clean along with me to get your house sorted while I sort mine. So I'm starting today by tidying up the toy kitchen in our living room. This is really played with loads and loads at the moment since we've moved and since we've put it in a different place, obviously in our new house, and the children got better access to it. I sort all the toy food into these baskets, just like we do in our real kitchen, so it makes it a bit easier to scoop it all up and put it away. And Zara is helping me. You might wonder why she's wearing a onesie in the middle of the day. Well, she's been to school in the morning because she's in half day nursery. When I pick her up, she's had her lunch and this is our little gap uh, where we've got some time together before we go and pick the bigger ones up, which is why we're getting some cleaning done. But she says she wanted to wear her Elsa onesie and I'm just like, do you know what? Pick your battles. You want to wear your Elsa onesie, darling? Let's clean together while you wear a onesie. So she's got a little uh, duster to do dustering, as she calls it, so she wants to help. She actually really enjoys helping me. She likes this time where it's just the two of us together. So I've got some Method Granite Spray, which smells amazing. It smells kind of like apple fizzy chewing. I'm just wiping up my kitchen worktops with a microfiber cloth. I have loads of these and then I use them. I used to use loads of kitchen roll years ago. Now I just use these microfiber cloths and then I stick them in the wash and get a fresh one. I like the fact that I don't run out of them then. Obviously it's better for the environment and I think they do a better job of cleaning as well to be honest. So I've wiped down around the kitchen after our lunch and I'm going to wipe up the table because there's still bits of muck and things from where Zara's managed to spread goodness knows what all over it. I've given Zara the other cloth, which isn't especially dirty, it's just a bit damp to go and put in the wash for me. She's a good girl, she's three, and she enjoys helping me doing little jobs. A little bit of praise goes a long way. Now I'm getting one of these dusters, a bit like the one Zara's got, and just wiping around, as well as using a little bit of Method. I've got the multi-purpose pink grapefruit, which smells great. Uh, just to kind of do some of the surfaces. I'm doing the television just with the duster. I'm not using any product or anything on that, just to pick up dust. And then along this unit uh, where we store mostly toys and things, to be honest. I have got different plans for this living room, which I shall talk about later in the video. But first I want to show you this. It's my remote control holder. It's not really supposed to be a remote control holder. I think it's supposed to be a candle holder from Ikea. But I find that by saying, this is the remote control holder and allocating a place, the remote controls are marginally more likely to be returned to it, marginally less likely to be lost. Because I don't know what it's like in your house, but remote controls do like to go walkies in our house if they do not have a home. So as you can see, Zara is being super helpful. And if she's not being helpful, at the very least she's happy. Now I'm gonna wipe down these play tables. We have a few of these in different colors dotted around the house. They work indoors or outdoors. They are great and they're really robust. So I'm just gonna wipe them over because let's face it, they're a bit dirty. And let's take a second to appreciate my jeans. These are not cool ripped jeans. These are jeans that are supposed to be normal jeans that have one of the knees going. It's always my left knee and it's always because I'm climbing on the floor with the children. Are you the same? Now I'm gonna show you my new toy, but not before I help Zara get back into her onesie because she wanna take it off and put it back on again. Whatever keeps her happy, eh? whatever keeps her happy. So this is my new Shark Duo Clean Corded Vacuum Cleaner, and it's so cool. This was gifted to me. It's got these settings, you can flip it so easily between hard floor and carpet, which is great because obviously we've got rugs and hard floor all on one floor. And I just think it's so great. Now, I don't know about you, but I, when you get into your 30s, there is nothing more exciting than new appliances, especially vacuum cleaners and cleaning appliances. So as you can imagine, and as you saw on my Instagram stories, if you saw those, I was rather thrilled about this. It's really lightweight to push. It's got the lift off technology, which we shall have a look at a little bit later when I get to uh, the stairs and things but it's just so, so easy to use. Uh, let me know if you want me to do like a full review video on it, like features and things, or if you're happy to just, you know, carry on with the speed cleaning, but I would be interested to know if you want to see that video. As you can see, it's quite good for getting underneath things as well. It goes almost flat, and obviously because it's corded, it doesn't run out of battery. Because that is the problem, isn't it, with having the cordless ones when you're sort of halfway through cleaning and it goes flat. Uh, so we've got another little nozzle now. We're going to do this bit under the table. There are just constant crumbs under the table. 
Um, I know we don't have a dog to eat up or stuff. I guess if we had a dog, we'd have dog hair on the floor instead. So it's not, you know, it's not like it would be less cleaning, but there'd be less crumbs at least. While I think of it, I will link the covers to these chairs down below. One of them's got a bit of a hump on it, as you can see, because that's just Zara's booster cushion thing. And I put the cover over the whole thing. These were not expensive and they were so easy to use and you just kind of stick them over your chairs. These were our old black chairs from the last house and covering them has not only sort of tied them in with the theme of our new house a lot better, but it's covered up any kind of holes and the, the chairs were looking tired, put it that way. And I, I'm really pleased with these covers. It's kind of an inexpensive, easy peasy change and refresh for them. Now we're going to vacuum a little bit more over here. I'm going to do something that does not get done enough and that is pull all of the cushions off the sofa and vacuum underneath. Look, I just found a little Peppa Pig bicycle stuffed down the side of the sofa. That just, just honestly, I just dread pulling the sofa cushions off because all the yuck and the muck and the crumbs. And the children don't even really eat anywhere other than the table. So where do all the crumbs come from? That's what I want to know. If no one eats at the sofa, where are the crumbs coming from? Now, as I attempt to reassemble the cushions onto the sofa and clearly have no clue which way round they're supposed to go, so I'll just wrestle with that for a moment, we'll talk about the fact that this sofa is not going to end up in our living room. So we're going to have new sofas to match our living room, because our living room is the least finished room in the house, and that is because we need to buy new sofas, but I can't do that until we have moved our dining table and we can't move the dining table until the extension is done off the kitchen. So everything's kind of on hold until that happens. A few people said, why didn't we extend before we moved in? And in a word, timing, which the timing wasn't right. We needed to move in and we haven't had time to do the extension yet. So the extension will be done. It won't be too messy because it'll mostly be external work and it'll only be a bit messy when we knock through. So I'm not too worried about it. But I would like it done as soon as possible because uh, we've just stuck with this one sofa more sort of squashed into this sort of living and dining space. Whereas the living room will be just a living room and the dining room will be just a dining room or maybe a dining room with a sofa in it as well. I don't know, depending on what it looks like when the extension is finished. So anyway, watch this space because I will be doing renovation updates, um, which I'm really hoping we can start the extension really, really soon. Like really, really, really hoping, but there's just a few things we're waiting to hear back on before we can get started on that. So now switching over from hard floor to carpet mode, super easy to do, to do the rug. And it just changes the level of suction, I guess. It, it feels different. It feels like uh, more of a pull as you're vacuuming and obviously it just picks up more. Now I'm actually flipping over the rug. So what I tend to do is vacuum the rug and then flip over the rug because it gets any bits that are really embedded into the rug out. And then when you flip it back over again, those bits are kind of loosened up and they really got out. Does that make any sense? Do you do this and do you find it works for you? In the last house, we had a rug that was so hairy and fluffy. It was lovely underfoot, but you couldn't physically vacuum it because it was positively hairy. And I didn't want those again in this house just because it was such a pain to clean. The only way you could clean them was take them outside and bash them. It was just, so it's really nice to walk on, not amazing for cleaning. So I, I did want something a little more practical in this house. And the rug was just one of the Ikea ones. As it happens, if you can see the corner of the stair carpet, the rugs that we chose from Ikea accidentally matched almost perfectly to the stair carpet that we chose, and which is the same carpet we've got all upstairs. Uh, so that was, you know, it worked out really, really well. And I could pretend that I did that on purpose, but it was actually a fluke. So a perfect fluke, but great. Uh, now I'm vacuuming up this little tray, which also came from Ikea actually, which we just use for putting boots and shoes on as we come in and it just collects the worst of the mud. Um, so putting umbrellas away and let's flip the rugs in the hall as well, do the backs of those. We don't actually wear shoes in the house just because it keeps most of the dirt outside. We take our shoes off by the front door. In theory, sometimes the children do run in, but it does, it does save quite a lot of cleaning, but still it's amazing how much muck ends up in the hall. So once I've finished just vacuuming this bit of the hall, I really like the light by the way on the front of that, uh, the shark, thought I'd mention that. It does help to kind of pick things up, um, you know, to see what you're picking up 
to shed a little bit of light to the matter. Now we're going to grab from my laundry room my Valida One Two Spray and I'm going to anti-back my floors with a bit of Method Rhubarb and yes I'm going to put on my oh so sexy mop socks because they just, there's nothing more annoying than having footprints when you're trying to clean the floor. You clean the floor and then leave footprints everywhere. It leaves your feet soggy or your socks soggy whereas these mop socks just kind of help clean it and swish it all around without leaving footprints. I love them. I know, I think my teenager thinks I'm super sad, and I don't care because they make me happy. The girls love wearing them. I'm actually amazed that Zara hasn't tried to take them off me and wear them herself. Uh, so we're just gonna do, you know, all the floors that I've just vacuumed. Uh, this method, um, it's wild rhubarb. It just kind of smells like sweets, it smells amazing. Um, I'm not going to do all of the bit where Zara is because she has got, I've put the rug back down now and she's playing, so I'm just going to do behind the sofas and this. It's, you know when you've got children with you and um, I've got Zara with me this afternoon, I'm trying to squeeze in this power out before I go and pick the others up. You've got to kind of pick and choose. You've got to make peace with the fact that you're not going to be able to do every single thing absolutely perfectly because you've got to be practical and you've got the little ones with you. So the fact that I haven't able, been able to anti-buck a bit by the TV under the rug or whatever, just have to make peace with that. Now I'm going to use this lift off technology, which is cool. So basically, the bottom of the vacuum cleaner can stay at the bottom of the stairs, and then I can pick up the the top section and carry it around with me. So it's still corded, but it's not nearly so much of a pain in the bottom as if it was just stuck to, you see what I mean? See, it's like a little lift off unit, how cool is that? I'm very aware now, I do not have much time left before we have to leave for the school run to go and get my big ones. And have I got everything done I want to get done on my list? Probably not, but like I said before, and like I will say again, as mums, we've only got limited pockets of time. We can maximise those times, we can be as productive as possible during those times, but we cannot beat ourselves up when we have to do things like go and pick up our children and we haven't finished all the stuff we want to do. And if the house is not immaculate, I have far from cleaned the whole house during this hour, but then we can't expect to get everything done all the time. Before I go and do pick up, I just want to show you the muck that has been cleaned off my floors. Look how gross that is. And I'm gonna chuck all that into the wash and I'd better put the rugs back, haven't I? Because otherwise, by the time we get home, it, the place is gonna look a tip. So putting the rugs back, at least the house is sort of back into some sort of shape. What I do tend to do actually is just put towels down by the front door so what the children have got somewhere to take their shoes off and not make a mess of my freshly cleaned floors. Now, a very quick vacuum over the top of the rugs. So we've done the top of the rugs, we've done the underneath of the rugs, and now I'm just gonna do the top of them. And then that's kind of finished in there. Last job now. Empty all this muck out of the vacuum cleaner. Look at all that disgustingness. Ugh. Super easy to empty though, luckily. Super, super easy. But it's always a little bit horrifying and satisfying at the same time to see how much muck has come off your carpets. Like, ew, gross, that was all over my house. And, oh, actually, this has done a really good job of cleaning up. So, yeah, horrifying and satisfying simultaneously. you like this video? Please give it a... Thumbs up. And don't forget to... to ignite the fire. Subscribe. And, and hit, hit the, the bell to be notified. When we post more videos, videos. every... Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And Sunday. Yeah. My latest video is just across here. It's another video you may enjoy from my channel down here. I'll see you guys soon.